International Relation and Islamic Studies Research Cohort, FISOL, Philippine International Studies Organization, the DSRN, the Colonial Studies Research Network, and the BRLN, the Bangsamora Research and Legal Network. As he discusses the, the background and the economic implication of the ASEAN Plus 3 Regional Bloc, let us all welcome Dr. Nasif Manabidang Adyong. Good afternoon, Paul. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I was actually writing from uh, another pre uh, previous event, which is on decolonial uh, approaches on legislation, which was spearheaded by UP and the Bangsamora Parliament. That's reason why I actually emailed if I could be late, but hopefully, uh, and thank God that the event had uh, completed earlier than expected. So uh, I'm now here and uh, I was tasked to present about uh, APT or ASEAN Plus 3. So I'll be more critical about ASEAN Plus 3, uh, you know, uh, as you can see in my slide presentation. And please bear with me because I'm having some uh, uh, coughing and flu. Uh, if would interrupt my speaking ability to present to you uh, uh, about my presentation. So I'll just have to uh, open the slide function, the display. So the title of the presentation for today is so that everyone could be acquainted and oriented about cooperation within the ASEAN Plus 3 context. Is it actually incidental or coincidence based on historical facts and events that took place in Southeast Asia in total with its concomitant relationship with these East Asian countries from China, Japan, and South Korea, despite of their tensions and uh, conflicts among these three major East Asian countries. Uh, the outline of the presentation, I'll be just be very brief uh, to provide you some context, some background about, uh, 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 about APT, the financial crisis of 1997 that actually uh, paved the way uh, incidentally or coincidentally about the uh, uh, a birth of the uh, ASEAN Plus 3 and some uh, keen observation, something to contemplate about uh, the importance and significance of APP3, especially on our economy in the Philippines. And some uh, very short concluding remark. So some providing a brief background of what APT, uh, uh, this actually began in uh, this month. Uh, but uh, several years ago, 1997, at the height of the, the Asian financial crisis, I, I bet you some of your, some of the students have not yet, you know, uh, existed uh, when the uh, financial crisis took place uh, as an urgent uh, crisis uh, <clears throat> that promulgated along the uh, a a Southeast Asian uh, uh, region. So this idea uh, was actually spearheaded by the state of Malaysia and actually agreed by member states of ASEAN uh, to actually formulate about a uh, um, solution on how to counterpart such financial crisis uh, uh, in 1997. So they really had a dialogue and conversation, diplomatic correspondences were uh, started uh, even at the height of during the financial crisis among these ASEAN member countries and also the three East, uh, East Asian countries on how to go about and to mitigate uh, the problems of finance, uh, financial, uh, especially its impact on the economies of Southeast Asian countries. And this, uh, this proposal was actually sidelined over the second ASEAN uh, informa informal summit that took place in Kuala Lumpur. Mm -hmm. And uh, the proposal by Malaysian state is to further strengthen and deepen East Asia cooperation at various levels, whether in politics, economy, social culture, and other fields, especially that you're part of the academe. There are also talks about academic exchanges and student exchanges. Uh, but I don't know if uh, uh, there are programs of, of academic exchanges in the milieu uh, between East Asian countries and ASEAN. 
uh, but that would depend on probably University of the East um, the signing of memorandum of agreement with uh, its counterparts in those countries. So uh, the financial crisis uh, started in Thailand uh, in July, and there were unprecedented attacks by currency speculators to actually devalue Asian currencies. Um, <clears throat> at the start of, uh, I would say, uh, during the Second World War and after Second World War, because as you can see in your IR lectures, uh, it was the uh, hegemonic power of United States to make U uh, U.S. dollars as the threshold and benchmark of uh, exchange currencies uh, at the behest of uh, post-Cold uh, War uh, at that time, it was gold as a standard of exchanging currencies. But because of the persuasive uh, and getting the mutual consent from European powers, especially that Europe was devastated by two uh, wars, uh, they had to, uh, uh, you know, uh, make loans from U.S. And this was an opportunity for you, for the United States, to really get a uh, persuasive power to get the consent of European powers that the standard and benchmark of exchange of currencies was United States, uh, US dollars, uh, than the gold standard. And this took place in 1977 in the Bretton Woods Conference, as they call it, to do so. The, and then the history, uh, uh, and uh, as time goes by, it became, and it actually affected even Filipino currency as we, you know, try to reflect on what could be the uh, uh, market uh, devaluation and evaluation of Filipino uh, peso against U.S. dollars and other currencies. So most major Asian currencies this time were affected and uh, were most had lost more than 50% of its value to the U.S. dollars. Uh, and this is actually the persuasive power of hegemon, uh, getting the consent of European powers uh, as a, uh, a bad luck of uh, uh, um, uh, devastations brought about by those wars that they had. And uh, the currency, the valuing of uh, uh, Southeast Asian currencies against the United States dollars. And these also realized that the continued state of devaluation of Asian currencies could cripple growth actually economic growth, even uh, social political can also be affected. So thus the ASEAN and what they call the plus three counterparts agreed to a greater resolve to this matter by forming the calculus known as the ASEAN plus three. So it was just a calculus at the time uh, to uh, mitigate the uh, impacts of financial crisis in 1997. So it was just an incidental or coincidence about the birthing of uh, ASEAN plus three. So looking at the trends during that time, uh, in late 1990s, Asian countries were facing financial difficulties due to currency devaluation. So what could be uh, the further mitigation and resolution to uh, solve this issue? Uh, according to them, during that time, to further sustain development within the region, Asian countries uh, must enhance cooperation in areas deemed important. So what are these uh, enhanced cooperation? Was it security? Was it political, social, educational? Well, uh, as my neighbor guesses, it's about financial, actually, too, as a response to the financial crisis uh, that devalued the Southeast Asian currencies uh, against uh, US dollars. So how ironic to think that Malaysia pre-proposed, again, this idea of a regional grouping which is called ASEAN Plus 3, uh, which is also similar at the time when they had this East Asia uh, uh, economic uh, calculus. So uh, it was actually similar to a certain calculus, which is called the East Asia economic calculus to the ASEAN Plus 3 calculus as well during the financial crisis. At that time, the head of Malaysian state, uh, Dr. Mahathir, uh, proposed an East Asia grouping in 1991 through the East Asia Economic Calculus, which actually failed due to lack of support from Japan with the backing of the U.S. Now, this is what you call uh, hedging and also balancing against hegemons. 
uh, when you have these regional bloc called the ASEAN, the South Association of Southeast Asian Nations, trying to gripple and trying to find more ways on how to counter financial crisis in uh, in that time, to uh, uh, bandwagon or even to balance uh, uh, the impact of devaluation of currency in order to find assistance from uh, China uh, and South Korea, but in this times, uh, even before the uh, emergence of APT, it was a failure on the part of uh, uh, Malaysia uh, when they initially proposed this without the support of Japan and, and US, uh, uh, making it hindrance to the birthing of APT at the time. So to continue, uh, Asian countries have been grouped well, uh, some uh, are reluctant and indirect in their groupings long before this event. For example, as you can see in your notes, historical notes and IR, uh, remember the 1930s New Order in East Asia and the Greater East Asia called Prosperity Sphere, which is also uh, one of the parts why we were invaded by Japan to be part of this Greater East Asia called Prosperity Sphere. And uh, to tell you frankly, uh, it is coincidentally that the growing efforts in AC and AP3 saw the birth of East Asia cooperation, or East Asia was then referred to ASEAN, China, Japan, and Korea. Uh, and this had led to the first summit, the East Asian Summit, organized by ASEAN in coordination with the three major East Asian countries. And the APT cooperation gave birth to what they call joint statement of, on East Asia cooperation by the report of EASG. And this is quite problematic uh, until now because for the past uh, several decades, they have just, you know, enunciated and declaring statements that we don't know if it has a teeth or implementing rules and regulations. It's just a joint declaration or declaratory, uh, declarative uh, uh, um, mechanism just to issue uh, statements that would go further the diplomatic relations between and among uh, these ASEAN member uh, state countries and uh, the East Asia. So to continue after a concerted agreement on establishing this AP3 cooperation, uh, ASEAN actually established in 1998 after financial crisis, the East Asian Vision Group actually to uh, mitigate the financial crisis. And they actually appointed some eminent persons, uh, uh, those who have connections in the uh, hierarchy of powers or the, the powers to be in these ASEAN countries to conduct a study on East Asian integration uh, and why was ASEAN uh, plus reconducting a study on East Asian integration? What the need, uh, what are the necessary uh, uh, factors and uh, needs that uh, uh, we need to find ways on integrating ourselves to, uh, to be part of East Asia? whether economically, uh, culturally, or politically. So uh, as you can see, and I, what I mentioned here, it's not a mix up, mix up concoction, but it was a carefully planned arrangement. So it was actually incidentally uh, 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 observation, well, except for what we call the financial crisis that happened abruptly. And this is what makes it a coincidence that, uh, that gave boost to the in, uh, to the birthing of the APT, which gave actually a kickstart for uh, uh, institution, institutionalizing APT in, in the entire structure and framework of ASEAN. And this can be explained with this uh, framework. As you can see, Malaysia proposes two uh, um, mechanisms, the East Asia Economic Caucus, which actually a failure, and also the ASEAN Plus 3, which I think it was initially a failure, but because of the financial crisis, give boost to, uh, to the uh, existence and a birthing of ASEAN Plus 3. And this actually compromises some certain developments uh, with a East Asian uh, countries. Uh, and, and it resulted to Chiang Mai Initiative, 
Uh, you can also see some uh, reportage done by East Asian Vision Group. This was also the declaratory power that they announced during that time, uh, where a technical working group uh, composed of eminent persons would provide an East Asia study group to spearhead and provide kind of empirical data on what could be integrated among ASEAN member uh, countries together with the economies, uh, whether in the political and social political lives of uh, East Asia. And this actually, with all of this, uh, uh, the re report of the TWG, the technical working group who spearheaded the East Asian study group uh, to find ways of integration, and also the Chiang Mai initiative have actually uh, gave impetus and developed uh, some mechanisms to uh, build and institutionalize APT in the overall uh, uh, manual of operations and structure of ASEAN. And uh, with that, they had their first East Asia Summit. As you can see, if you're going to go to their website, there have more than 38 summits that have been, that have been held. And yet, uh, we're still in, uh, in shadow. Uh, whether, are this just declaratory statements or a joint statements, uh, but with no teeth, with no uh, implementing rules and regulation on how to come about, on how to address certain issues. For example, we really have a very serious issue with China, uh, with our, you know, uh, uh, West Philippine Sea disputes or South China Sea disputes. Uh, there are also disputes, uh, territorial disputes between Japan and China, as well as soft power, hard power uh, uh, influences uh, and tensions uh, between and among China and South Korea. And especially... <clears throat> China's uh, participation with the Warsaw Pact. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, it's not the Warsaw Pact, with, but the Shanghai Cooperation uh, 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 Agency, not agency, but it's a Shanghai Pact uh, between uh, Central Asian states, uh, China, and their support to North Korea. So how can they go about this, uh, you know, security tensions and 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 interest uh, when you have these East Asian uh, communities uh, uh, having uh, a wanton integration with uh, ASEAN member states, and yet there are many political uh, and security deadlocks. Uh, so you can see with China supporting, uh, uh, you know, North Korea. Uh, in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, yeah, CC, SCO, Shanghai Cooperation, Cooperation Organization. Actually, it was built to actually uh, balance the power of NATO uh, in the Western Hemisphere. And this actually would have led to uh, a goal to create East Asia integration uh, between ASEAN and the East Asian countries. Now you can see that APT together with other countries that they wanted to, uh, you know, uh, invite to, to the APT, such as India, Australia, and New Zealand. So we'll take a look at how, uh, if it will be successful empirically or not, then uh, uh, the question is, is this APT is just a talk shop or does it wrap the actually perennially uh, address certain so social political issues. Uh, for example, territorial disputes uh, 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 in terms of jurisdictions or economic problems, uh, economic embargo, sanction, among others. So some observations with APT that it is more consolidated grouping and spawned by efforts of the say in Ch China, Japan, and Korea or South Korea, uh, and with common understanding that it has to play some pivotal role uh, in building efforts to integrate their economies. Are we going to have a one ASEAN currency uh, that would probably have some kind of benchmarking with uh, Chinese, South Korean, and Japanese currency? Or are we still in the talks about that? Uh, because there are some clamors that, oh, we need to be like European Union having one currency and more integrated open market among ASEAN. But what we have seen so far is the easing of border 
uh, transmigration among ASEAN. That's the reason why you don't have to apply for a visa if you wanted to go to Singapore or other ASEAN countries. Even if you go to, you know, I was actually quite ironic and bizarre that I find some Filipinos do not, do not lining up to the ASEAN lane. Uh, actually, uh, I don't know if the spirit and spirit decor of ASEAN have been truly imbibed among the uh, psyche, uh, social psyche of Filipino identity? Well, that's still a question because not so many Filipino you go to airport are not lining up on the ASEAN lane. But you know, for me, I've been lining up so that it will have an ease in the entry point when I wanted to go to other countries in, in, in ASEAN, in a uh, Southeast Asia. And there is also diversity of governance among the members of AP3 and regional rivalries, uh, which I think are lessened due to greater sense in regional identity. And this is also a question of regionalism. Uh, how can we find ways of common identity among, uh, you know, even in Southeast Asia, in fact, uh, when that, for example, uh, actually 60 to 70 per 60 percent uh, are. Uh, no, actually 50% are uh, Islamized or Muslims. And actually more than uh, uh, of the entire Southeast Asian populace are Buddhists. So only Philippines are the Christianized country. Uh, uh, if we're going to take a look at the entire uh, uh, demography of uh, uh, Southeast Asia. So how can you find a common regional identity when we do have very diverse multicultural and intercivilizational linkages among one another. And this regionalism in Asia has always been influenced. Well, the usual suspect, the US, and where it continues to exert critical influence on the regional development of East Asia. So how to overcome this without having the notion to create another APEC. So uh, these are the questions. As you can see, we wanted to have a more integrative uh engagement with uh china with south korea and japan and yet there are also extremities of influences especially coming from the asia pacific from the from the us uh and what i may have also stated the uh the complexity of of russia uh coming uh into fort uh of influence uh in the region uh, especially now, are we going to have a more uh, independent Philippine foreign policy as what the Duterte administration have started in terms of coordinating uh, uh, foreign policy with China? Or are we going to have more uh, closure uh, with China because it's more close in terms of geographical proximity with the Philippines uh, compared to the U.S., which is so far? Uh, or uh, are we, do we have a guarantee uh, with the uh, you know, BFA and the Mutual Defense Pact Treaty with the United States that the United States will uh, protect us uh, in times of war when China, if China will attack and inv uh, invade the Philippines? So something to ponder with this, you know, APT. Uh, the idea in bringing Asian co countries together was actually mooted in 1938, especially with the East Asia cooperation at the time. And this actually would lead you, uh, we're going to take a look at what uh, took place in 1930s. It's the 20 year crisis in the United States. Uh, remember EH card, the 20 years crisis, uh, a historian and also a well-known IR theoretician about the impact of the 20 years crisis in the global lens uh, and in the global uh, and uh, what could have been also its impact or implication to the Asian countries. Uh, and also some events that spark, you know, Malaysia is spearheading uh, a search to a development model in Asia. Thus far, uh, far you can see that even uh, in 80s, uh, uh, Mahathir Mohamed uh, of policy, foreign policy is the look is policy that uh, we should not be enamored about our uh, and be subjugated again by our colonizers. Although yes, our former uh, post-colonial elites have continued and extended colonial policies and legislations and laws to our countries. Now, that's the reason why even in the uh, um, culture of Filipino, we have really, you know, uh, 
uh, colonized, uh, not only in terms of, of social, psych uh, but also in terms of psychological uh, uh, being. Uh, so uh, it's about time to look east uh, because of the rising power in China and South Korea and Japan. And you all can also take a look at uh, the development uh, um, history and experiences of south korea japan especially when japan was you know uh after world war ii was so devastated and what they uh what they did did in 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 also uh uh having uh to progress their economy after uh uh, uh the devastation that they had experienced even south korea actually uh i was in seoul a few years back and uh i was uh, invited by the south korean government to uh have some kind of talks uh in terms of uh, academic exchange and we uh, were oriented by their uh you know agenda uh they actually show videos that in 1950s they were so devastated by wars and in just a very short period of time uh they suddenly became one of the economic tigers in in, in asia uh and progressed and that's also, I think, also one experimentation that they have learned and reflected and was inspired by uh, by the Japanese. And you can also take a look at how come China is now, uh, you know, uh, um, becoming second in terms of after five to 10 years becoming the second world uh, uh, top economy after the United States and even uh, probably in a few years' time, it will uh, supplant United States in terms of economic prowess. So you can see that uh, uh, Malaysian state really had uh, spearheaded diplomatic relations in order to uh, institutionalize APT. Uh, that's the reason why they have uh, diplomatic correspondences in uh, with Japan in 57, Korea in 1964, and China. So APT mechanisms are actually the backbone of what they call the East Asia integration and an outcome of the EASG proposes which a joint declaration is Asia cooperation uh, paved the way. And in conclusion about this, uh, in order to further strengthen and deepen regional cooperation, APT cooperation bodies could conduct research or studies in areas of mutual interest to all East Asia. As, you, as, as what I have told you, there are tensions, there are border tensions, there are maritime security, problems, uh, resources, problems, even the pouring in of uh, low cheap labor of Chinese to the Philippines. That's what actually they did in Africa. That's the reason why many African countries are indebted. Uh, they have, you know, big loans, uh, amount of loans uh, uh, from China. Uh, uh, and thank God that what China had promised during the Duterte administration providing billions to the Philippines did not actually materialize because I think with our the increased you know uh, uh, loan that we have from World uh, um, World Bank and International Monetary Fund we will still have loans from China so uh, this actually the conclusion that I have observed about APT. So in concluding, it's just, I think, a talk shop, but with the intention of having more deep and diplomatic relationship, but not necessarily uh, providing direct uh, uh, and uh, finite uh, solution to the problems uh, besetting the Southeast Asian region. So thank you for uh, uh, listening. Uh, uh, to my observation about the APT. Thank you po for that detailed discussion, Dr. Adyong. Definitely, you know, in community building initiatives, ASEAN plus three combined with efforts of ASEAN, China, Japan, and Korea plays a crucial role, especially in economic and prosperity. And thank you for again. And that we will now proceed to our open forum and take some time for the questions now. Just a reminder that for our Zoom attendees, you can drop your questions in the chat box or message directly the Zoom hosts. And for our viewers on Facebook Live, you can drop your questions at the comment section. All right, so for the first question. 
Yes po. And for our first question comes from Miss Erika Abawag. How does ASEAN compare to other economic blocks such as the APEC, the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, and the TTT po, the Trans-Pacific Partnership po? Uh, the other economic blocks have more teeth, especially in implementing their policies and also uh, providing uh, uh, ratification and treaties with its member countries. Uh, but in terms of uh, APT, it has not co come into fruition about whether uh, an economic uh, integration among ASEAN member countries and also the East Asian economies would have uh, more robust and comprehensive economic ties or integrated ties. So we're still, you know, if you're going to take a look and explore and survey the more than 38 uh, summits that APT had, it's really uh, 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 pretty much a futile of more so uh, providing more emphasis on uh, declarative statements, on joint statements or declarative statements on something issues that happen in, in a member country or something that happened. Uh, and they actually don't uh, actually uh, discuss uh, serious issues uh, and sensitive issues, for example, South China Sea or, um, you know, what's happening in Burma, in Myanmar, uh, and, you know, and I would say also the professional ego of Singaporeans. Uh, you know, uh, Filipinos are so adamant about when we are being cascaded and also being elbowed out uh, by the Singaporeans. You go to uh, these summits of the SEAN that they one actually wanted to be the benchmark, the standard, in, for example, in diplomacy, in 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 uh, conversation, in policy making, because they are Singaporeans, so there are actually some kind of egos, some kind of political uh, maneuvering uh, in this high level summits. And thank you, Po. We have another question, Po. This one is from. Brendan Oi, how can we maintain a good and consistent relationship with different countries that are part of the regional trading bloc? You know, to maintain a good relationship with other countries is remote our, to promote the Filipino interest. Uh, there is actually no national interest. It's quite a vague term. If you're going to take a look at our literature, oh, uh, the state interest, the national interest, because if we're going to take a look in the, at the Philippine context, there are multitude of interests in the Philippines. Water resources, financial resources, uh, the Bangsamoro problem, the Cordillera problem, uh, terrorism, uh, and among others. So there are multiple multitude of interests uh, that might be uh, supplementary to uh, to frame a national uh, framework uh, of of of, uh, of the overall caricature of 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 interests of the Philippines. So, in order to have a good relationship with other countries, is of course to promote first our interests. Uh, what's our interest with Canada? What's our interest in China? Uh, in, in with uh, Vietnam. Uh, and from there on, we we'll build uh, our con uh, and continue our conversations with them. If we will have some kind of academic exchange uh, between uh, Thailand and and the Philippines, we can do so. We can approach the Thailand, but you know, uh, there are also some kind of problems with Thailand because actually Thailand is the one who spearheaded this ASEAN accreditation of universities, we can take a look like De La Salle, Ateneo, uh, and even UP uh, uh, have been put in sidetrack uh, because uh, Thailand actually spearheaded this ASEAN uh, accredited uh, programs. So uh, I think UP is no longer wanted, wanted to be accredited by these so-called standard of ASEAN uh, academic stand uh, uh, accreditation. Uh, 
So you can take a look at this type of cases uh, and to find mutual ways of understanding of interest if we have good mutual interests on uh, export and import of rice or of uh, sugar, you know, sugar was uh, a controversy in this present administration, the market BBM administration of what happened to our sugar uh, industry. Uh, so we can, you know, uh, get some assistance from those countries who uh, uh, export sugar, but uh, still don't know how will the present administration will uh, address uh, uh, the controversy in the sugar implantations and also our increasing debt loans is still increasing and 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 based on financial uh, uh, studies, it will take not only our generation but the succeeding generations to pay our debt loans uh, internationally. Thank you, Paul, Dr. Adyong. And another question, Paul, coming from Ms. Shakira Gatet. If ASEAN APP grows in different sector, would they able to surpass po, the status of Western country? If so, po, what would be their strongest factor, Paul? I think there is a chance that we can actually, you know, be a regional hegemon block in this part of the world. Uh, not only, you know, uh, having a mirroring effect that, oh, we need to be EU, European Union, because they're so developed, they're so, you know, progressed. Uh, um, uh, and actually our adv adv advantage uh Compared to, you know, uh, Gulf cooperating countries, uh, GCC, uh, compared to other organizations uh, in the Western world, are our natural resources. We are so, uh, you know, um, uh, rich and rich of natural resources. And there are studies that in 50 years to, you know, um, probably uh, four to five decades, the problem uh, that the world will be facing is the lack of water resources. And what I mean, mean is not, you know, rivers, seas, no. Uh, the water that are uh, capable for human consumption, uh, these uh, clean water resources uh, that Southeast Asia have, is a, an advantage uh, uh, for the Southeast Asian economies, um, which will be actually. And also, although uh, we will be vulnerable with the impact of climate change, but I hope that we are now starting to address issues of climate change impact because 50 years from now, based on the scientific studies, many countries and many islands will be submerged as sea level increases. Even metropolitan cities, Metro Manila, Cebu, Davao will be submerged to, uh, 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 to just a meager increase in, in, in the level of sea. So we, our local government units or even our Philippine government must really address this, uh, uh, you know, uh, inevitable uh, phenomenon. Uh, Western countries have started, some countries in the West have started building their seawall uh, to mitigate uh, uh, problems of climate change. But us, which we are perennially visited by typhoons, by calamities, earthquakes, among others, uh, and flash flood, I don't know what's the priorities of the government or even local government units in your municipality, in your barangay, in your regions. Probably their priorities is how to amount to gain wealth from the public fund taxes of, of a Filipino nation. 
Ayan. Thank you po, Doctor. We have another question, pero ang daming nagtatanong. No? Napakaraming curious about this topic. And now we have another question. Po from, this one is from Ralph Samonte. What benefits would the ASEAN East Asia Bloc bring to Asia's tiger economies? Ayan. What I can say is that the more effective is bilateral cooperation than multilateral cooperation. If you go to a bilateral cooperation, diplomatic relationship with uh, other, other countries, you can actually have a more uh, comprehensive way of probably economic import and exports uh, between, for example, Philippines and, <clears throat> and Russia. Remember during the Duterte administration or Philippines and other countries, but if you're going to take a look at the multilateral level, um, it's really a kind of a marginalized one uh, that have really no actually direct impact to the economy. So uh, I would suggest uh, more bilateral talks with countries that we can see have mutual <clears throat> interest uh, uh, with uh, have a more direct impact to our economies. Thank you very much, Dr. Adyong, for addressing the questions po ng ating mga participants. And that's it. I think there are no more questions. Thank you very much for your active participation in today's open forum. We hope that you have gained new knowledge about the ASEAN East Asia Re Regional Bloc. And because of that, we want to know about your realization and manifestation from our symposium. I am, and... But before we move forward to our next speaker, we would like to present the Certificate of Appreciation. This Certificate of Appreciation is presented to Dr. Nasif Manabilang Adyong for being our guest speaker in Diplomacy, Prosperity, and Amity, the ASEAN East Asia Symposium, given this 3rd of December in Manila, Philippines. Signed by Dr. Gary C. D., Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Professor Percival S. Gabriel, Chairman of the Department of Social Sciences, Humanities. Professor Amy A. Deason, Advisor of the International Studies Societies. And Ms. Kyle Cheska de Bilbil, the Project Head of Diplomacy, Prosperity, and AM. A photo off with our speaker would not be forgotten. Let us, we encourage our participants today to turn 